It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Researchers Michael Ash and Jim Boyce at the Political Economy Research Institute at the University of Massachusetts Amherst have published new editions of the Greenhouse 100 Index ranking U.S. companies by their emissions, which are driving global climate change. And they have also released the Toxic 100 Air and Toxic 100 Water indexes, ranking U.S. industrial polluters by using U.S. EPA toxic release inventory. Perry indexes include environmental justice indicators to assess impacts on low-income people and minorities. Now with us to discuss the new indexes, we are joined by one of the researchers of the reports, Michael Ash. He is Professor of Economics and Public Policy at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Michael, we are very pleased you can join us today. Thanks, Charmini, for having me on. Michael, let's first examine which companies are contributing the most in terms of greenhouse gases and driving climate change in the process and why them and not those companies that one would consider as usual suspects when it comes to fossil fuel emissions such as say Exxon Mobil? Well, uh, the way we're ranking companies, the way the Greenhouse 100 looks at companies' contribution to greenhouse gases is the actual emissions from those companies. So at the absolute top of the list are electric power generators. Uh, these are companies that own in many cases, dozens, many, uh, many, many tens of electrical power plants all over the United States, and they emit an enormous uh, quantity of greenhouse gases, particularly carbon dioxide. They do this because they burn fuels to generate electrical power. So we're not taking a look at the pass-through. ExxonMobil is a great question. We're not taking a look at the amount of, um, of um, fuels are passed into the economy that then end up getting burned in individuals' cars, individual household cars all over the country. We're really looking at companies that did their own emissions of greenhouse gases, and the top of the list is dominated by electric power generators. It's extraordinary that the top three generators of greenhouse gases in the U.S. are responsible for fully 5% of all U U.S. greenhouse gas emissions. That's 5% of, again, all of the company emissions, all of the automobile emissions, all of the uh, agricultural emissions, 5% from the top three companies. It's really a, a fairly extraordinary concentration, and that's largely from uh, electrical power generation. All right, now um, mention the companies, uh, what they do, and why they're on top of the list. So at the very top of the Greenhouse 100, which again, lists the companies that are most responsible for greenhouse gas emissions in the United States are three electrical power producers. There's uh, Duke Energy, there's American Electric Power, and there's Southern Company. Uh, those constitute the top three on the Greenhouse 100. Why are they there? They're there, frankly, because uh, we use a lot of electric power. So, and, they, and these companies own many uh, facilities that generate electric power by burning fossil fuels. So these companies burn coal, natural gas, oil, uh, that combustion produces greenhouse gases. Those three companies have large, large networks of uh, generators all over the country. And they, again, those three are responsible for a full 5% of U.S. greenhouse gas emissions. It's really quite an extraordinary concentration at the top of the list. Now, um, I'm not sure whether you went into this in your report, but how aware are they of the contribution that they are making in terms of uh, these uh, gases in our air? Well, these companies have reported their emissions to the Environmental Protection Agency. So if they are keeping an eye on their greenhouse gas emissions, and I certainly hope that they are, they should be aware of the, uh, of the, of the contribution that they're making. Why it's important to focus on these very large emitters at the top of the list is because fairly small changes in corporate policy at these very, very large emitters could make an enormous difference in uh, greenhouse gas emissions. We don't need to reform greenhouse gas emitters all over the list of greenhouse gas emissions. We can, uh, if, we, if we worked on very large emitters, if we improved the performance of our electrical power grid, if we moved more extensively towards green energy, we could make a very large dent in the U.S. contribution to greenhouse gases, which is uh, 
uh, which is an extremely large, the United States is a very large contributor to global greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, what does the EPA do with this information? Is there any recourse uh, to these companies? I mean, of course, they're reporting and they uh, collect this information, but what does the EPA do with it? So the EPA is authorized to regulate uh, greenhouse gas emissions as, um, as, as a matter of pollution. So I believe the EPA won a, uh, won a case that gave it the uh, right to uh, regulate greenhouse gases. So EPA has the possibility to do a lot of regulation of the gases that are coming out from these companies, the, green, the greenhouse gases that these companies emit. Uh, in the current climate, I think the EPA has uh, greatly reduced, in the current political climate, the EPA has greatly reduced its purview for action on greenhouse gas emissions. So at the moment, we have the, uh, we're able to use this information on greenhouse gas emissions, but it's really up to other stakeholders. It's up to uh, socially responsible investors who may be concerned about um, uh, the future impact of greenhouse gas emissions uh, on corporate performance to take action. It's up to activists, it's up to uh, regulators to take action on these greenhouse gas emissions. So EPA does have the authority to act under the current, uh, in the current political climate. We're not seeing a lot of movement from EPA on regulating these emissions. And so we really have to take advantage of the information that uh, this greenhouse gas reporting puts in front of us uh, to take action where it's possible. Now, if the EPA is a designated watchdog on this and they are not uh, taking action, um, in, and of course activists and environmental organizations uh, may be screaming, but there, are there any legal um, recourse for the public or advocacy organizations to make sure that the EPA complies with their responsibilities here? Well, I think that the critical issue here is getting this information out and then allowing a variety of stakeholders to uh, make use of the information as it sees fit. So I think we're starting to see very interesting movement at the local level on regulation of greenhouse gases uh, by, from state and local regulators. I think we're increasingly going to see action from uh, shareholders who are concerned about the long run viability of uh, the long run viability of firms that are highly dependent on uh, at, at the moment, highly dependent on greenhouse gas emissions but firms that could change uh, if, uh, if, their investors, uh, if their investors demand a change. So I think that we have a, a range of possible uh, responses. Obviously, uh, federal action is something that uh, we'll, we'll need to rely on very heavily going forward. And at the moment, we're not seeing uh, a lot of leadership there. So researchers at uh, Perry, Michael, um, Ash, and Jim Boyce, they have produced uh, several indexes and at uh, the Greenhouse 100 Index, which ranks U.S. companies by their greenhouse gas emissions driving global climate change is what we've just discussed. There's so much more to discuss in terms of your other indexes. Uh, Michael, we want to invite you back to continue this discussion and uh, we hope you can join us then. It would be my pleasure. Thanks, Charmini. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.